early dinosaurs emerged during the late Triassic period, around 230 million years ago, in what is now South America. They evolved from a group of reptiles known as archosaurs, which also gave rise to pterosaurs and crocodilians. This period was marked by significant changes in ecosystems and climate, providing a context for the diversification of many reptile groups, including the first dinosaurs. Their rise is closely linked to the decline of many other reptilian groups during the Triassic-Jurassic extinction events, which cleared ecological niches that dinosaurs then occupied. Biologically, early dinosaurs were relatively small and bipedal, a body plan that provided advantages in mobility and adaptability. They were diverse in their dietary habits, with early forms including both carnivorous and herbivorous species. This adaptability in feeding strategies allowed them to exploit a variety of ecological niches. Their emergence was a product of evolutionary innovation, adaptability, and the ability to capitalize on ecological opportunities in the wake of mass extinctions and environmental changes. Their early success set the stage for the incredible diversity and dominance of dinosaurs in the Mesozoic era. Classifying dinosaurs within the clade Ornithocelida has gained relevance due to recent phylogenetic studies that challenge the traditional division of dinosauria into Saurischia and Ornithischia. Recent studies, such as the one by Barron, Norman, and Barrett in 2017, suggest that theropods, traditionally Saurischians, are more closely related to Ornithischians than to Sauropodomorphs. This reorganization forms the clade Ornithocelida, which includes theropods and ornithischians, while placing sauropodomorphs separately. Traditional classifications relied heavily on the structure of the pelvis. Saurischians were lizard-hipped, and ornithischians were bird-hipped. However, detailed analyses of pelvic structures and other skeletal features reveal that theropods and ornithischians share more similarities with each other than with sauropodomorphs. The reclassification helps explain certain evolutionary pathways and dietary adaptations. For example, both theropods and ornithischians exhibit diverse feeding strategies and dental adaptations, suggesting a shared evolutionary lineage that experimented with different ecological niches. The term ornithocelida dates back to the 19th century when it was first proposed by Thomas Henry Huxley. Reviving this term reflects a return to earlier albeit now more rigorously tested, hypotheses about dinosaur relationships. Lagosuchus, based on its incomplete holotype skeleton, was a lightly built archosaur with long, slender legs, well-developed feet, and short forelimbs, indicating it was an agile biped, it does possess some traits suggesting that it was a probable dinosauriform, closely related to dinosaurs. Gregory Paul estimated its weight at about 170 grams, akin to a weasel, while Thomas Holt suggested a length of 50 centimeters and a weight similar to a pigeon. The vertebrae and forelimbs show similarities to Marasuchus but have distinct features such as shorter ulna and different vertebral structures. The pelvis and hind limbs resemble Marasuchus, with an elongated femur, strong nemial crest, and elongated metatarsals. These characteristics suggest that Lagosuchus was transitional forms between cold-blooded reptiles and warm-blooded dinosaurs. Known only from a partial skull and a few pieces of its skeleton, Pisanosaurus was a one-meter-long animal usually considered to the be the earliest known member of the Ornithischian dinosaurs, but some recent studies have thrown that into question, suggesting that it might not even be a dinosaur at all. Instead, it may have been a member of the Silesaurids, Triassic dinosauriforms that were close cousins to the dinosaurs but not quite true members of the group. Small and lightly built, Silesaurids had long front limbs and may have been at least partially quadrupedal 
and some showed evidence of herbivory with beaks at the tips of their snouts. If the oldest Ornithischian is actually a dinosauriform, we're left with no fossil record for Ornithischians until the start of the Jurassic. And that brings back up the controversial question of where they actually originated. Saltopus is known only from a single partial skeleton lacking the skull but including parts of the vertebral column, forelimbs, pelvis and hind limbs. These parts are mainly preserved as impressions or natural casts in sandstone, with very little bone material present. It was about the size of a domestic cat, roughly one meter long, with hollow bones like those of birds and other dinosaurs. It likely weighed around 500 grams most of its length was due to its tail, and it had five-fingered hands with the fourth and fifth fingers reduced in size. A large phylogenetic analysis of early dinosaurs and dinosauromorphs recovered salt opus near the base of the dinosaur lineage, suggesting that it may represent the closest relative of true dinosaurs. Luisuchus lived in what is now northwest Argentina during the late Triassic. It was about one meter long and was an early member of the Silesaurids. Much like its later Silesaurid relatives, it had a long neck and slender limbs and was probably mainly quadrupedal, with the ability to briefly run bipedally to escape threats. Its serrated teeth suggest it was carnivorous, likely feeding on smaller vertebrates and abundant insects found in the same fossil beds. Uniquely for an early dinosauriform, it also had a single row of bony osteoderms running along its spine. No other early dinosaur precursors with osteoderms are currently known, so Luisuchus likely independently re-evolved this feature. Acillosaurus is known from a relatively large number of fossils, providing important insights into Silesaurid evolution and the origin of dinosaurs. Unique features, such as a lack of teeth at the front of the premaxilla and a downturned, toothless lower jaw tip, suggest it had a small beak. It was fairly basal among silesaurids, retaining some dinosaur-like features absent in advanced silesaurids, as well as primitive features contrasting with dinosaurs. Discovered in 2007 and described in 2010, its name means ancestor lizard in Swahili and Greek. Acillosaurus was lightly built, likely quadrupedal, and estimated to be 1 to 3 meters long and 1 meter high at the hips. Its beak and peg-like teeth, indicating an omnivorous or herbivorous diet. Eucoelophysis is known from several postcranial elements found in the petrified forest formation in New Mexico. Initially thought to be a coelophysoid dinosaur, its hind limb anatomy excludes it from Neotheropoda and Dinosauria. Key features, such as the absence of an oblique ligament groove on the femoral head and a low nemeal crest, support this exclusion. Cladistic analysis reclassified Eucoelophysis as a non-dinosaurian dinosauriform. This makes it the youngest known non-dinosaurian dinosauriform, coexisting with early dinosaurs during the Norian period. Silesaurus measured approximately 2.3 meters in length and was likely a fast and agile animal with a narrow snout, forward-pointing nostrils, and large orbits for acute vision. Initially thought to be strictly herbivorous, later research indicated it may have been insectivorous, with coprolite evidence suggesting a diet including beetles. The animal had small, conical, and serrated teeth irregularly spaced in its jaws, and a toothless dentary tip likely covered by a keratinous beak. A 2014 study suggested herbivory based on tooth microwear, though omnivory could not be ruled out. A 2019 study supported the idea of an insectivorous diet, proposing that Silesaurus used its beak-like jaws to peck small insects off the ground. Silesaurus and other Silesaurids were generally considered quadrupedal, but evidence also suggested it retained the ability for fast bipedal running due to its long tail and gracile forelimbs. Shindosaurus has been challenging to classify, with its position at the base of the Sauriscian family tree varying in different studies. 
Initially thought to be a prosauropod upon its discovery in 1984, it was later described as a Herorosaurid in 1995, a classification supported by many paleontologists. However, some researchers have argued that Shindosaurus is a probable basal Sauriscian dinosaur, noting its shared characteristics with various basal Sauriscian lineages and the resemblance of its medially expanded brevis shelf to that of Pseudosuchians. Despite the incompleteness of its skeletal anatomy, the holotype specimen, which might not be fully grown, shows traits indicating a post-juvenile stage. Despite being an early dinosaur, Storicosaurus was relatively small, measuring about 2 meters in length and weighing around 30 kilograms it had a lightweight, agile build, indicating it was a fast and active predator. It had a long, slender body with a flexible tail that likely helped with balance and agility. Its hind limbs were well developed for running, while its forelimbs were shorter but strong, potentially used for grasping prey. Initially thought to be a theropod, Storicosaurus's classification has been debated. Recent studies suggest it is a basal Sauriscian, closely related to sauropodomorphs. Storicosaurus is significant for its mix of primitive and advanced features. It helps paleontologists understand the early stages of dinosaur evolution, particularly the development of bipedalism and the diversification of early Sauriscian dinosaurs. The holotype skeleton of Nathovarax is so well preserved that researchers were able to create a digital endocast of its brain. It had a large flocular fossil lobe of the cerebellum, a brain region typically associated with motor control of the eyes, head, and neck, suggesting an active predatory lifestyle. This is why it is reduced in later sauropodomorphs but remains prominent in most theropods. The soft tissue data from Nathovarax supports evidence of carnivory in herorosaurids, such as their tooth and claw structure. Analysis indicates that while the tooth proportions of herorosaurids and basal carnivorous sauropodomorphs slightly overlap with those of theropods, they do not overlap with each other. It is inferred that during the Carnian stage of the Triassic, herorosaurids occupied large predatory niches, while small basal sauropodomorphs occupied small carnivorous and omnivorous niches. After their extinction, theropods became the dominant predators, leading sauropodomorphs to evolve into larger, more herbivorous forms. Herorosaurus was a lightly built, bipedal carnivore with a long tail and a relatively small head. Adults could reach up to 6 meters in length and weigh around 350 kilograms its strong hind limbs and long feet suggest it was a swift runner, while its tail helped balance the body. The forelimbs were less than half the length of the hind limbs, with the first two fingers and thumb ending in curved claws for grasping prey. Its skeletal anatomy displayed traits from different dinosaur groups and some non-dinosaurian archosaurs. For example, it had a Sauriscian-like pelvis but a partially open bony acetabulum and a backwards pointing pubis. The skull resembled those of primitive archosaurs more than later dinosaurs. Herorosaurus was likely a predator of small and medium-sized plant eaters and possibly preyed upon by larger Rarosuchians. Coprolites assigned to Herorosaurus show it could digest bone. Comparisons of its scleral rings with modern birds and reptiles suggest it was cathemeral, active throughout the day at short intervals. Although no stress fractures were found in its hand and foot bones, bite marks on a skull indicate non-lethal fights with other Herorosaurus. <laughs>